Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue on Patreon. So I did a video follow-up about one of the critical thinking exercises that I did and I got really good feedback about it. So uh, with that in mind, I am going to go back on some of the critical thinking exercises and some of the other exercises as well. And I'm going to talk through my answers because I know you guys are already doing a lot of reading and sometimes maybe talking it out would be more helpful than just like citing my references and things like that. So what I'm going to do on this video is review the sequencing um, quizlet that I did. It was a quizlet a few months ago and I will probably leave like uh, what the answers were in the description box. So if you guys are interested, you know, you can see it there. Uh, if you have any questions, comment and let me guys let me know <laughs> let me guys <laughs> let me know because this channel is as much your channel as it is mine and the reason that you guys are here is naturally to support me of course but to also learn so i'm here to help and i don't know um how much i'm helping if I don't get feedback. So um, thank you for the feedback uh, about the video. I'm so glad I got a positive response on it. So that way, at least I know what works for you all. And if it's something else that you want or if you want something more of a broken down or whatever, just let me know so I can work it into the schedule because I am <laughs> going to try to step it up a little bit more on Patreon. I know December was a little thin um, but I still uploaded the content, uh, but I felt like there was just so much going on with YouTube that uh, I just took, there was a lot of time taken away from Patreon and I want to make it up to you guys. <laughs> so um, I am going to be releasing these uh, videos here and there uh, so that way you guys can uh, get them at your leisure and just watch them whenever. Um, but again, if you need something further explained, just let me know and I will do another video on it. So um, let's go ahead and get into the sequencing. This was a sequencing quizlet that I did for you all. And I'm going to read the scenario and I'm going to read my response. All right. So the scenario one was the patient has bilateral osteoarthritis of the knee. They are presenting for a preoperative visit for a right knee replacement. So the answers are Z01.818 which is the preoperative um, encounter code. And then you have the M17.0, which is the bilateral uh, osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, the rationale, when the patient is presenting for a pre-op, the encounter for pre-procedural examination is always sequenced first. The patient is only receiving surgery on one side, but has osteoarthritis of the knee bilaterally. Anytime a patient suffers from a bilateral condition, but only one side gets treated, you would still code the bilateral code. So I see this a lot um, sometimes with my providers that they think, well, I'm only treating the one side, so uh, or the other side's already been treated, and I, I'm not doing anything for that other side, but I'm just taking care of this one side. <laughs> so I'm going to code it this way, the unilateral code. When the patient has the condition bilaterally, it doesn't matter where the um, treatment is directed to. It's always going to be coded as a bilateral condition as long as that patient suffers from that condition bilaterally. So that is something to know. All right. And the next one is, there's only three, just so you guys know. <laughs> um, the patient is presenting one week status post right knee replacement, overall healing well. During the visit, they have their dressing, their surgical dressings changed. The answer is Z47.1 which is aftercare following joint replacement. And then the Z96.651, which is the replacement of the right knee. And then the Z48.01, which is encounter for um, surgical dressing change, right? And this is rationale. The reason that they are presenting is for the post-op for a knee replacement. During this visit, the surgical dressings are changed. Aftercare for replacement following joint replacement is sequenced first, then the location of the joint replacement. Because if you look in the book, uh, in the Optin 360 coding book, it will tell you to code first um, or, or code in addition to uh, that joint replacement aftercare code is going to ask you to code an, an additional code for the joint that was replaced. Okay. Um, 
the where am I? Okay, aftercare for the replacement following joint replacement is sequenced first, then the location of the joint replacement, and finally the surgical dressing change. And I said, pro tip. The codes for dressing changes and suture removals should always have a code before it. It is not some it is not typically a primary listed code. This is due to this being done in conjunction with something else. In the above case, the patient was here for a follow-up after surgery and the bandages were changed. So the main reason for the encounter was not just because they were getting the their dressings changed, but because they were in the post-op global. They're here because they're they're in their you know, in their global period and they're trying to <laughs> make sure everything is okay. So this patient had a knee replacement. That would be why that is listed primarily first, but it's gonna be the aftercare following joint replacement. So there's orthopedic aftercare and then there's more specifically uh, aftercare following joint replacement. In this case, because he had his knee replaced, you would code that the or aftercare following uh, joint replacement first and not orthopedic aftercare because that um, joint replacement code is more specific, followed by the joint that was replaced, followed by the dressing changes, okay? Because it's more important to know that the patient is there because of that joint replacement, okay? And the last one, uh, aftercare for tarsal tunnel release and tibial tendon debridement for tenosynovitis. The answer is Z48.811, which is aftercare following surgery for a neurological condition. And then Z47.89, which is orthopedic aftercare. And it says the rationale, the tarsal tunnel, think similar to carpal tunnel, but for the feet. Okay, that's what tarsal tunnel is. Um, tarsal tunnel is a uh, neurological condition that involves the nerves. Release in the case of a tarsal tunnel refers to the nerves. Therefore, since tarsal tunnel is a neurological condition, code Z48.811, aftercare following surgery for a nervous system, followed by the orthopedic aftercare for the tibial tendon debridement for the tenosynovitis, which is an organic condition, and that is a completely separate condition. So that uh, debridement that... Uh, Tibial tendon debridement has nothing to do with that tarsal tunnel release. Tarsal tunnel release is a completely separate procedure by itself because it has to deal with the nerves. And then the tibial tendon debridement for the tenosynovitis is completely separate, having to do with the ortho side. So uh, that is something to recognize when you are looking at these. Um, it's not always going to be just only one type of aftercare. If there are multiple conditions going on, uh, like this tarsal tunnel and the uh, tibial tendon debridement, you know you're going to be looking for two separate things because these these conditions have nothing to do with the other one. So uh, that is my explanation on that. So uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. This was a Quizlet, so <laughs> that's why the video is really quick. But um, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope it makes more sense. The more you start to work these encounters and the more you start to work these scenarios and things, the easier it is going to get um, to, to do these. These take time to write. <laughs> so I have to think about what I'm going to say and I have to make sure that I word it properly because that way it makes sense to you guys. Um, but hopefully this does make sense. Um, always look and make sure that you understand what each condition is. And if it is the same, right? Like if it was, um, let's just say, ah, let's say they had a plantar fasciitis. Um, they had a plantar fascial release, okay? That's, that's the foot, right? And they also had a bunionectomy at the same time, okay? On the same foot, same time. And they did two, two of these things at the same time, right? Two surgeries. Well, the plantar fasciitis falls under orthopedic aftercare. So does the bunionectomy. So it would be just a one Z47.89 because that covers for both the bunionectomy and the uh, plantar fascia release. So that is something to, to be able to spot, you know. Again, these are related, well, they're not related to each other, but they are related to the orthopedic aftercare. 
So that would be why you would know you would only report the orthopedic aftercare. And that would be it for those two conditions. But in the case of this tarsal tunnel and the tibia tendon debridement, um, tibial tendon debridement, sorry, uh, that, you know, that's two separate conditions. So <laughs> it's, it's, it'll just take time. It's fun though, <laughs> when you start to really look at what's going on. Um, but again, I will put more exercises together, but I was just giving you guys a taste of what this is. So until the next video, thank you so much for joining me and I will see y'all later. Bye.